Hey guys, Steph here. So I have not been blogging because I have a very sore throat, laryngitis actually. Can't speak too much. But I have some interesting things coming down the uh, pike or pipe. I think it's pike. Anyway, new things coming up. Uh, number one, I'm going to be, I think, I'm going to do a little mini series on rewriting an old app. Now you see, Studio Web is at version three, but the code base, it's close to, it could be seven years old now or more. It's hard to I have to think back. Though it runs well and it's pretty much bug free, it does have some fundamental problems from being a seven year old code base, having had multiple developers work on the code base. And to be totally honest, me, my fault for not paying close attention to some very crucial stages of the app's development life, uh, where I was not directly involved in some aspects of the architecture, where frankly I wasn't into it, and I let people take care of it, and now we have a mess. And the mess is, is that the app is very hard now to update. You do a little update here, and then you break something over here, and you do an update there, and you break something there. So adding anything but very superficial updates to the software is extremely problematic. And that is the number one reason why you should have very clean, simple code, why you should adhere strictly to particular standards in terms of your code and in terms of the architecture. So the last thing you want to do as a developer is to rewrite an app that works from scratch. And it's largely, largely a judgment call as to when you're going to pull that trigger and you are going to actually rewrite from scratch. So we're doing it for several reasons. First reason I just cited. The second reason is that in the last seven years, there has been uh, new frameworks and architectures that have be been made available. So I decided that I wanted to uh, take advantage of those new architectures as well because of what I want to implement into the Studio Web app going forward. So I think what I might do, depending on the time and so forth, is come out with a series of videos where I go over step by step as we're going through the process of the rewrite and uh, sort of give you a peek into some of our decision-making processes right from the architectural design uh, start moving forward. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be directly involved with everything from the uh, database design, architectural choices in terms of the database, app design, architectural choices, why we're going to be doing this and that and the other thing. For example, if you're looking at an app that has a growing user base, how should you scale out the database? There's several strategies. So we're going to look at the different strategies, why you'd want to go with one or the other. Again. There's no universal right or wrong answer in these situations because it's all circumstantial. It's like, what's the best type of vehicle? Well, are you going on a highway? Then maybe a sports car, German sports car. Are you going off-roading? Then you want a Jeep, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. So I'm going to be looking at these type of things, and these are architectural choices that are going to have to be made for City Web. Mindful of what the app does now, because the first thing you do is when you rewrite from scratch, you want to reproduce all the function, you know, functionality of the app you have in place now, the app that people like, the, the app that's been proven. But in addition to that, within the context of the architecture, you have to consider what are the future features that you want to implement. So you have to be mindful of the big picture. Now the advantage of the rewrite is that you're well aware of what works, what doesn't work, you know what you want, and you know how to achieve certain things, the core app, you're also very aware of the use case, meaning you're very aware of what your users want. So as a result, you can really design your architectures on the database level, on the uh, business object level, in terms of the framework that you choose, even in terms of the platform, i.e. language that you choose. This is all impacted by your knowledge of the use case. That's why in previous videos I mentioned if you have a degree, let's say in biology or uh, chemistry or accounting or something, and then you decide to go into programming, into code, you could be very valuable 
to certain companies because you will have what they call domain knowledge. If you, for instance, are a practicing accountant and then you go into coding for a company that works on accounting software, your knowledge of accounting, and especially if you have real world skills in accounting, will come extremely handy in terms of you building a really good accounting app because you're going to know what accountants are looking for. Now with Studio Web, I had been teaching code for several years at this point through my videos and mentoring and so forth. So when I built the first, when we built rather the first prototype for the Studio Web app, I didn't write the code. I just don't have the time to write the code these days. I really, I got about 75% of it correct, I would say, give or take, you know, right off the bat because I really understood how people best learned how to code. And said, I understood that from years and years and years of experience, also from the fact that I come from a family of teachers. My father's a teacher, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc. My brother taught. So we have a lot of experience in teaching in a family. I've been surrounded by it my entire life. So that experience and that instinct of teaching, and especially teaching the code, gave the Studio Web app a huge advantage, a great foundation from the get-go. And then over the years, working with different schools and teachers and many districts and so forth, we were able to further refine the app. So in all those refinements, therein the dirty code got in there. It got in there because of the changes to the app based on user reaction or user input to us, rather, but also because I was slacking at one point and not paying attention to code choices and architectural choices uh, as this, the app was being developed over time. I'm not going to make that mistake again. So anyway, again, it's a this is supposed to be a, a short vlog. We're already at seven minutes, so I'll stop it here. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to come out with a new one. Again, the, as you can hear, the voice is very weak. So uh, hopefully soon. But uh, yeah, so I think uh, that series, I think rewriting Studio Web might be an interesting little series for you guys in terms of sneak peeking at how the process goes. And I think there'll be videos of myself and my two uh, senior developers who are highly experienced guys. And we're going to be going over every aspect of the app. In terms of high level architecture, I don't, we're not going to sit there and watch them write code. That would be kind of, I think, boring. But in terms of architectures and decision making, why we're making cer certain decisions, I think that might be a big part of it. If this style of presentation or this subject rather is interesting let me know put in the comments below thumbs up this video yada, yada, yada. don't worry the other series like the entrepreneurial series i will continue to put those out again my throat same thing with the python course again my throat and also just work so it's uh my day-to-day -day job has been pulling me away besides the throat problems but as soon as this gets better for i'll be re i'll be finishing up the python course we've got like 24 video lessons out there now two and a half hours of material i'm not sure how many more will be it will probably be another at least an hour and a half of material to complete this this intro intro to python which uh, so far based on all the comments i got people love it anyway that's it for now have a good weekend i'm recording this on friday Bye bye